Hi again, kids. Uh, this is Chapter 5, Lesson 2 uh, on your Cornell note page. Uh, again, fill this out. And our topic today is absolute value. Uh, the idea of absolute value is new for most sixth graders. I'm guessing when I say absolute value, uh, you probably don't know what that means. Uh, after today, that should change. Um, okay, let's get right to it. Uh, the first keyword that uh, most kids don't have much of a problem with this idea is opposites. Okay, in math, I'm going to draw a number line. And what we talked about in the last lesson is positive numbers count in this direction, negative numbers count in this direction. So I'm going to label my number line. And negative numbers in this direction, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 5. Okay, so there is our number line. Opposites, the meaning of opposites is this. Opposites are numbers that are the same distance from zero. Another way to think about that is if you're trying to find the opposite of something, like let's say we're trying to find the opposite of three. Here's three. Imagine folding the number line at zero, three is going to land on its opposite. So if we were to fold this right here at zero, most of you can probably already tell that three is going to land on negative three. So three and negative three are opposites. Okay, so pretty simple idea. If you fold the number line over at zero, opposites land on themselves. So let's just do that example. Uh, the number three, if we were to fold on the number line, it would land on negative three. So I'm just going to write that these are opposites. And I could have asked, what's the opposite of negative three? Well, if I fold on the, across 0, negative 3 is going to land on 3. So I could say that negative 3, the opposite of negative 3 is 3. I could also say the opposite of 3 is negative 3. So again, opposites are numbers that are the same distance from 0. Here's kind of a tricky one. What if I asked you the opposite of zero? Well, if you fold the number line, imagine folding it, where's zero gonna land? It's gonna land on itself. So zero is actually its own opposite, okay? So the opposite of zero is zero because it would land on itself. Any other number, if you're asked to find its opposite, just imagine folding across zero, where is that number going to land? And you found its opposite. Uh, so some of your problems today that you're going to uh, be solving are just finding the opposites. And I want to do a couple quick examples. Uh, first one is opposite of 542 is, what do you think I would write there? If I fold across the zero on a number line, 542 is going to land on negative 
542. Okay, one other example. This example, we're asked to find the opposite of the opposite of negative 27. <clears throat> if, you're, if you have multiple opposites like this, what you should do is work, start with a number and work your way this way. So here's what I mean when I say that. I'm at negative 27. What's the opposite of negative 27? So the answer to this is 27. So right now I've got 27 after I solve this. The opposite of negative 27, so far it's 27. So I can imagine 27 right here. In fact, how should I do this? I'm just going to write a 27 right here for this part. Opposite of negative 27 is 27. But then I've got this. I have the opposite of this. What's the opposite of 27? Well, I'm right back to negative 27. So the answer to this problem is 27. So again, if you've got, and I could, you could have a problem with multiple, even more opposites. You could say find the opposite of the opposite of the opposite. Work your way backwards figuring out one at a time, working back away from the number. So negative 27, the opposite of that is 27. What's the opposite of that? Negative 27. If I had another one out here, I, would, I could just keep going with the same idea. Some of your problems today are this, finding the opposites. Fold, imagine folding across zero, and that's the big idea. Okay, so let's, I want to highlight something else that you are folding across zero. I'm just going to make a line like this. That's the idea of opposites, folding across zero. So that's half of your practice problems today. The other part is absolute value. And again, for most kids, this is a new idea. The absolute value of a number. What does that mean? So I'm going to write it, and then we're going to go through some examples. The absolute value of a number is, and I'm going to write this in capitals. This is the phrase I want you to remember. How far away from how far away from zero the absolute value of a number is how far away from zero is that number so let's highlight that so other big idea today absolute value new idea for most kids how far away from zero is the big meaning, big idea. So now let's walk through some examples. If I asked you how far away from zero is seven, you would say seven. The absolute value of seven is seven. What if I said the absolute value of negative four? How far away from zero is negative four? The answer is it's four units away from zero. I would say it's four away from zero. I would not say that it's negative four away from zero. The absolute value <coughs> is always going to be a positive number because we're talking about distance. Negative four is four units away from zero. Four is also four units away from zero. Um, 
absolute value is always going to be positive with one exception. The symbol for absolute value Two tall vertical bars. That's the symbol for absolute value. Okay, so symbol for absolute value. This thing right here. Two tall vertical bars. So now let's go through some examples using this notation. This is asking, find the what is the absolute value of 4? The meaning of that, how far away is 4 from 0? The answer is, it's 4 units away. Let's do another one. Again, these bars mean absolute value. Find the absolute value of negative 33. What that is asking is, how far away from 0 is negative 33? The answer, on my number line, it's going to be way over here somewhere. How far away from 0 is it? It is 33 away from 0. Here is the one exception that's not a positive number. What is the absolute value of 0? How far away from 0 is Zero. Here's Math Cat Frank coming to say hi. Absolute value of zero is zero. All other answers for absolute value are going to be a positive number except for this one. The absolute value of zero is zero. Okay, what about this example? Oh, come here, Frank. Oh, you gotta, I, Frank is just dying to say hi. <clears throat> oh. Hi, Frank. Can you say hi to the kids? Say hi. Come on. Can you say hi, Frank? There we go. Okay. Frank is going to say goodbye. Let me get rid of Frank. I accidentally left the door open, so Frank was able to get in. So back to this. Again, the bars mean absolute value. I'm going to start on the inside and work my way out. So I'm going to cover up that to start and just solve this. What's the absolute value of negative 13? How far away from 0 is negative 13? So if this was my problem right here, I'd write 13. But this out here is saying, take the negative of that. So that answer is 13. Okay, that answer is 13. And this says, take the negative or the opposite of that answer. So the answer to this is negative 13. Again, if you've got stuff out here, Cover it up and work from the inside out. How far away is negative 13 from 0? 13. What's the opposite or negative of that is negative 13. Okay, sometimes you'll have absolute value in uh, situations like this. You'll be asked to find a, a, an expression with absolute values. Uh, so to solve this, I'm going. I have the absolute value of negative 15. I'm just going to think of that right now. What's how far away from zero is negative 15? 15 away from zero. So that part is 15. Take away. What's the answer to that? How far away from 0 is negative 8? Negative 8 is 8 away from 0. So this is what I would be solving. 
15 subtract 8, then the answer to that is 7. Uh, you could also have something to do on the inside of absolute value, like this. You might have a problem where it says, gives you something to solve on the inside of the absolute value. Well, solve this first on the inside. What's 12 minus 7? That's 5. And then you want the absolute value of 5. How far away from 0 is 5? The answer is it's 5 away from 0. So the answer here is 5. OK, uh, I'm going to highlight the different examples, because this kind of looks all jumbled up to me. So just for ease of, these are the different examples. Absolute value of 4 is 4. It's 4 away from 0. The absolute value of negative 33, how far away from 0 is negative 33? It's 33 away from 0. How far away from 0 is 0? Zero? 0. And then here we had the absolute value of negative 13, which is 13, but then we took the opposite or negative of that, so my answer was negative 13. And then here... We had absolute value of 15, subtract the absolute value of 8, which turned into 15 minus 8, and our final answer was 7. That's it for lesson 2. So big ideas today. Opposites, if you fold across 0, opposites land on each other. And absolute value, how far away from 0 is that number? All right, that's it for lesson two. Oh, I almost forgot. Yikes, uh, hidden treasure. I meant to give this in the middle. Uh, just a reminder, I know you saw this in lesson one if you watched it. Hidden treasure reminders, solve the puzzle. Got to have all the chapter notes, and you must have completed the assignment to be a winner. And here is chapter five, lesson two puzzle. Okay, solve that. Remember that the puzzles should be a common phrase that you've heard of, and that's the puzzle for Lesson 2. All right, I will see you soon for Lesson 3. Until then.